Hello, one thing I didn't think I'd be able to uh, really do this year was uh, or this uh, football season was wear this uh, t-shirt which is an Aston Villa t-shirt and it says part of the Premier League and it got very likely that that wasn't going to be the case. All the predictions were, were that Aston Villa were going to get relegated but with a lot of drama uh, at the 11th hour if you like in the last game of the season uh, Villa, the team I support, stayed up and uh, it has been interesting watching sport, watching football for one big difference I think one thing you you miss for getting a sense, an idea of the atmosphere is having the crowds at the grounds being able to see the people's reactions, see the people's faces. Yes, you can see the reaction of the coaching staff and the few people who are at the grounds. But I think you get an idea of the atmosphere, the drama, what's going on by seeing the faces of those who are watching, the, the crowd, the people who are there. And what we're going to think about today is, as G Jesus had died on the cross and the reaction of the bystanders, the people who were there, the people who saw and heard what had happened on that day. And we're carrying on as we've been doing for uh, quite a few uh, weeks. If you've been uh, watching in Luke uh, chapter 23, and we're just going to read a couple of verses, 47 uh, to 49. It says, the centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, surely this was a righteous man. This is referring to Jesus. When all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what had took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. And the first person I was going to think about is the uh, centurion, the Roman centurion, the officer who is in charge of all the proceedings, this hardened uh, Roman soldier. And yet when he saw what had happened, when he saw what had happened, he praised God and he said, surely this was a righteous man. Or if you read Matthew and Mark, it says, surely this was the son of God. And it's, it's wonderful, isn't it, to think of his reaction. It's very likely he was a hardened Roman soldier who'd overseen and seen many, many uh, crucifixions before. And yet he, he'd seen so many people crucified and yet he saw something different in Jesus. He saw, you know, he heard what Jesus had said, including his prayer for those people who were uh, crucifying him. He'd seen the earthquake and heard all the events, seen everything that was going on and he was deeply moved. He was deeply moved. He saw something different. He saw something unique in Jesus. And there's one uh, a wonderful story about an actor who was uh, playing the role of the centurion in the, I think like the TV film, uh, Jesus of Nazareth. And uh, it was Ernest Borgnini and he, he kept weeping so much that filming had to be constantly stopped. And then when he was asked why he was weeping so much, he said, you simply can't come close to Jesus without being changed. And it's so true. I wonder, has Jesus changed you? Have you come close to him? I wonder what impact has the cross had on you? and on your life. And we also read in Luke 23 that the people who came to uh, see the crucifixion, they beat their breasts and went away. You know, it's a sign of grief, a sign of repentance doing that. They were deeply moved by it. They were affected by, by what they saw, by Jesus on the cross, by what they heard. And uh, also we read that Jesus' friends, including the women, who had followed uh, f from Galilee, stood at a distance. And it's good, isn't it, that Jesus made an impact on, you know, rough, hardened 
Roman soldiers, but he also made an impact on women like Mary Magdalene, who had been demon-possessed. You know, when we think of all those who were there at the cross, we can make a, you know, a exhaustive list. Someone wrote it, wrote it down, a list of all represented, and it went something like this, men and women, Jews and Gentiles, rich and poor, high class and no class, religious and irreligious, guilty and innocent, haters of Jesus, and lovers of Jesus, oppressors and the oppressed, weepers and mockers, educated and uneducated, the deeply moved and the indifferent, different races and nationalities, you know, all there at the cross. And the cross has been often said as the magnet of Christianity. You know, over the years, many people from all sorts of different backgrounds and starting points have been drawn by the cross, have been deeply affected by the cross and have come to Jesus because of what he did on the cross. And there's an old saying and it's a saying I love, it says the ground is always level at the foot of the cross and there was something about this in our daily bread which is the, uh, which are the Bible notes that you can uh, pick up and read for free, the American Bible notes, and it says this, I'll read it. It says, there's an old saying, the ground is always level at the foot of the cross. It was in the first century, and it is today. The foot of the cross is where paupers and princes, religionists and pagans, well-knowns and unknowns, and yes, generals and centurions, find level ground to kneel and embrace the Christ who died for them and for us we you know we don't really know whether the centur what happened with the centurion and with some of those people there but you the cross i wonder has that changed your life have you read heard taken it all in what the lord jesus christ did in dying on the cross for you and has it changed you has it changed your life? Because it's such a momentous thing. You can be forgiven. You can have conscience cleansed, new life, new hope, a wonderful relationship with God because of the cross. The ground is always level at the foot of the cross. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done. If you come to Jesus, sorry for those things you've done wrong and be prepared to turn from them and believe in him you can experience the wonderful new life, the changed life, the wonderful relationship that we can have all because of the cross. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for your great love shown on the cross. And we pray that just like with the people back then, it will have a real impact on our lives. It will change our lives. We thank you for the cross and for the Lord Jesus Christ and your great love for us. In Jesus' name, Amen.